So the first paper is a front-running attack in sharded blockchains and a fail cross-shard consensus. Um, the presenter is uh, uh, Jian Ting Zhang, uh, a PhD student from Purdue University. Uh, Jian Ting. Uh, yeah, the floor is yours. So where is the... How do you so use you it? Can, but they, I think so you can use this to move oh, forward and okay. uh, the red one to yeah. do backward. Okay. Um, thanks for your introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jen Ting. Um, today, I'm going to share our recent work from running attack in sharded blockchain and fear cross shard consensus. So this is a joint work with Wu Hui, Sifu, Tian Tian, Zi Song, and Anik Kai. Uh, so in this presentation, I will first uh, present a new from running attack and then present our solution. So first of all, let me uh, introduce some brief introduction. Sorry, uh, brief background. Uh, blockchain. So what is blockchain? Technically, blockchain is a state machine replication that allows nodes to maintain a uh, consistently ever-growing ledger. So the workflow of blockchain is as follows. Every time there is a leader proposing and ordering a new uh, block of transaction, and this new block will be then broadcast to the network. And after several rounds uh, of communications for the security, um, every honest node will uh, edit this uh, new block into their local ledger if the block is valid. So uh, because of some elegant features such as decentralization, uh, blockchain has uh, been used to implement many uh, applications such as the finance or decentralized finance and uh, gaming. However, the scalability problem limits the applications built on blockchain. Um, for example, the early stage uh, blockchain system, uh, Bitcoin, can only handle several transactions per second, which is far away from satisfying uh, the practical requirements. So the poor scalability of these early stage blockchains comes from that every node in the system has to uh, process all transactions and store the whole ledger. So even with more nodes joining the system, um, these newly joined nodes have to do the uh, redundant things, and therefore the uh, throughput uh, cannot be in increased. So blockchain sharding has been proposed to increase the uh, scalability of the blockchain. Uh, the idea of blockchain sharding is simple. So instead of uh, asking every node to do the same things, that is to process all transactions and store the whole ledger. Sharding divided the whole system into multiple groups or code shards. And uh, each group can process uh, transactions in parallel and store their different accounts or the states. So in this case, with more nodes joining the system, uh, sharding can create more shards to process transactions in parallel and therefore increase the uh, throughput. However, uh, sharding also introduced a new challenge. Specifically, um, there are some transactions called cross shard transactions, um, which uh, involve the data that is managed by multiple shards. So uh, in this example, we assume there is a smart contract in shard one and a user in shard two. For those people who don't know smart contract, uh, a smart contract is a program running on blockchain and the blockchain users can trigger the execution of smart contract by feeding them with some transactions. So in this case, if the user uh, wants to trigger the ex execution of the smart contract, then he has to uh, construct a cross shard transaction. And handling a cross shard transaction uh, is challenging because the system has to uh, coordinate it all relevant shot. So basically, there are two operations when handling a cross shard transaction. So first, uh, the shot where the user is need to process the transaction. That is to uh, modify the account uh, to pay for the transaction. And uh, the second operation is transaction execution, where the shot, the uh, smart contract is, uh, need to uh, change the state of the smart contract. So uh, the sharding system has to uh, guarantee that both of relevant shot uh, either commit or abort the cross shard transaction. That is to guarantee the consistency of the transaction. So many previous work adopt a uh, two-phase commit protocol, 
uh, to handle cross-shot transaction. So typically there is a coordinator in this protocol and there are, are two phases in this protocol. In the first row phase, the coordinator, uh, that is the shot two in this example, uh, send the cross shot transaction to all relevant shot uh, to let them uh, process and execute the transaction individually. And then in the second uh, phase, the coordinator will uh, correct all handle re uh, results from the uh, relevant shot and to decide it if this um, transaction could be committed or not. So obviously, uh, handling a cross shot transaction by the two-phase commit uh, will involve multiple blocks or multiple instances of consensus. So we observe that there is a limitation in the existing two-phase commit protocol. Specifically, there is a process execute gap uh, where uh, relevant shots can now process and execution the uh, transaction at the same time because uh, the two-phase commit uh, protocol decouples the transaction processing and execution. And we further find that uh, this process uh, executed gap make the cross shot transaction vulnerable to a new type of form running attack. But before uh, presenting the attacking process, let me briefly introduce what is form running attack and why the form running attack is important and terrible. So technically, uh, in a from running attack, the attacker can manipulate the transaction order to make their transactions executed before uh, the other's transaction. So in this example, uh, there are two transactions, the victim's transaction and the attacker's transaction. So we could find that even though the victim transaction appear at the network before the, the attacker's transaction, uh, the attacker's transaction will be uh, eventually executed before the victim transaction in some way. So many recent research uh, showing that um, the from running attack can uh, bring millions of dollars to the, to the attacker in the Ethereum network. So this is why many people has, have a misunderstanding that uh, blockchain researchers are rich. So it is, on, it is true only if the researcher is an attacker. So go back to uh, our scenario. Uh, to see why from running attack could happen in a sharding uh, scenario. So here we assume there is another user called Alice in the shard one, and he is, uh, he is also calling the smart contract in shard one. And note that since both Alice and the smart contract are managed by the shard one, so um, this transaction uh, is called intra-shard transaction and could be handled by the shard one very uh, efficiently and only uh, use uh, a single block. So uh, we could uh, find that compared to cross-shot transaction, uh, handling an, an intra-shot transaction only involve one block. So if we uh, use the time step to highlight the time when uh, transactions are processed and when transactions are executed, uh, we will find that in this example, even though the cross-shot transaction uh, was processed first, that the intra-shot transaction uh, would be executed uh, before the cross-shot transaction. That is uh, the from running attack in the sharding scenario. And it is worth noting that this from run running attack is different uh, from the existing from running attack because uh, it involves multiple blocks uh, but existing from running attack only involved the, uh, the manipulation of transaction order in a single block of a single chain. So in the rest of uh, my presentation, I will use uh, the block and transaction um, uh, changeably, um, and uh, I will use the order of blocks to represent the uh, order of transactions. So uh, before talking about um, uh, our solution, uh, let me briefly uh, introduce why this from running attack could happen. So we find that uh, it is because there is no order uh, between the intra shot transactions and cross shot transaction. So in this paper, we defined a, a finalization fairness, uh, which indicates that the execution order should be consistent with uh, the processing order. Uh, it is obvious that uh, this 
finalization fee and is, is the upside to the from running attack. So to prevent the from running attack, uh, what we need to do is to guarantee the finalization fairness. So the uh, high level idea of this work is to introduce um, a, an ordering phase. Specifically, uh, we use an ordering shot to order the, uh, this block before executing them. Uh, so the ordering rule is uh, based on their processing time step uh, there is the box time step because the box time step indicated um, the time when blocks are, are processed. So by doing this, we can guarantee that uh, the execution order of blocks uh, consistent with the, firm, uh, the the process order. However, it's, it is challenging to um, implement such uh, ordering phase uh, because uh, there is no guarantee that the ordering shot uh, will receive the uh, blocks in the uh, order same as their processing order. So in this example, um, if the ordering shot start ordering uh, blocks while rec receiving the B3, then B2 will be eventually executed after B3, uh, which will violate the uh, finalization fairness we define. So in this paper, we propose an asynchronous ordering solution called Hatchy. So specifically, um, we use a uh, so-called at least one policy where the ordering shot uh, can, uh, will start ordering uh, receive block only when he receives at least one block from all shots. This can guarantee that uh, the no shots will, missing, will miss the, uh, the ordering phase. So when start ordering, um, since uh, the ordering shots has no idea if there is any missing block between uh, for example, in, uh, in this example, between the B1 and B3. So what uh, he can do is to just order uh, this block. He 100% he ensure there's not other blocks with the time step smaller than the blocks he uh, wants to order. So to solve this problem, we ask the ordering shot to maintain our latest time step table, which will record um, the latest receive uh, block from every shot. So in this example, when start ordering um, the, the receive block, uh, the latest time, sta uh, time, time table looks like that. So for shot one, B1 is the latest receive uh, block, and uh, B3 is uh, the latest receive block from shot two. So once ordering, uh, uh, the, the ordering shot only order the uh, minimum time step, oh sorry, order the block uh, with the time step that is equal or smaller than the minimum time step of the table. So similarly, when we receive uh, B2, um, the latest time step table looks like that. So uh, the ordering shot could uh, order the B3 and B2. So uh, it is not easy to uh, explain this technology. So for those people uh, who are interested in the details, uh, please. Uh, go to refer, uh, go to read our paper. Uh, so we also implemented our protocol and compare it with two uh, representative cross uh, cross shot consensus protocol, who um, uh, which are vulnerable to the from running attack we present, and the experiment results show that um, uh, why our protocol can guarantee the finalization fairness there are no too much performance lost. So the takeaway, uh, first, in this paper, we present a new form running attack, which is different from the existing form running attack. And we also define a new finalization fairness, um, which can capture the uh, behaviors of form running attack. And uh, we also present our solution. And uh, maybe some future directions could be uh, exploring the from running attack in other scenarios, such as uh, the interoperability of blockchain and uh, database sharding. So thanks for listening. Now I'm open the floor for question. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Any questions? 
Hi, uh, thanks for your presentation. I have a couple of questions about the uh, practicability. Um, do you assume that all the shards have sort of a global synchronized timestamp and the order shard needs to know how many shards there are exactly? Or what, what, what sort of are the assumptions there? Uh, so where's your second question? No, I'm just uh, wondering okay. about the timestamp yeah. and yeah. then the exact number of shards in the system uh, because you need to know, okay, well, there are seven shards, so I have to wait for blocks from all seven before I continue. Yeah, so first of all, um, we assume that the ordering shards has to note the number of the number of shots. And there is no assumptions for uh, a, like uh, maybe a synchronized clock or time step uh, in those shots. So what the, the ordering shot do is to use the uh, block time step as well as the uh, block height because the block height indicated uh, you know, it's relevant to the uh, block time step. So uh, when start ordering, if the ordering shots know the uh, block height and the block, t block time step, he can uh, easily order um, ordering the shot he received by following uh, our policy. Okay, thanks. Uh, it seemed in your solution you said um, you wait, uh, the ordering shard waits for uh, one block from each of the shards. But that means if one of the shards is not live, then the whole protocol stalls? Uh, so there's a, a very good question because we assume the asynchronous network in our solutions, which means uh, some block may be delayed uh, arriving at the ordering shard. So, but things uh, in blockchain sharding protocol, we could assume each shard uh, is secure, which means it can guarantee the safety as well as the liveness. So eventually, all these block will uh, arrive at the ordering shot. So even though the ordering shot could know uh, receive maybe one, at least one uh, block from a shot, uh, but eventually he can do that. And so this and and by the way, we code our solutions on a synchronous ordering solution because we allowed. Uh, every shot to continue uh, processing transactions. So even though the, the ordering shot is stuck because of some uh, infrared uh, block, but the other shot can still continue uh, processing new transactions. So we find that, and, and this is one aspect, and an, another aspect is that we don't ask uh, the ordering shots to order all transactions in the system. So it is option for the users to uh, use the ordering shot to order transactions. Yeah, but so I guess if there's a transaction between shard one and two, then even if shard three has stopped, then that transaction doesn't go through, right? Uh, uh, sorry, could you say again? If there's a transaction cross shard between shard one and two, mm -hmm. but shard three has, uh, is not live, uh, so it's not producing blocks, then the cross-shard transaction between shards one and two will not go through, right? Because now the ordering shard is stuck waiting, if I understand. Uh, but it doesn't violate it, uh, uh, the, 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 the safety. Yeah, I guess so because you assume yeah, that yeah. shards. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably um, bring some performance loss, but uh, we think it is, um, deserve if you want to cheat maybe the finalization fee and is for some performance loss. Okay. But this is a good question and I think we can further improve it. Yeah, probably we can have one more question. Thank you. Uh, Abbas Ajar from Florida International University. I have two quick related questions. Uh, one of them is sharding right now used in any of the popular blockchains? And the second question is, can we do the same attacks on the rollups? Like, uh, is, uh, is a, another technology, I think, uh, similar to sharding, so. So your first question is that if uh, blockchain sharding has been used, used in, in production right now in any of the public In practical, blockchains. right? Yeah. So uh, to the best of our knowledge, there are very few uh, blockchain sharding uh, project or uh, successful pro uh, sharding project. So your second question is that if we can use this technology in the roll-up, uh, no, no, not the technology, the attack, the front-running attacks. Can we do uh, the same yeah, attacks yeah. on so, the yeah. air? Too? I think it's uh, deserve further exploring because uh, from my perspective, 
as long as uh, your system involves the interaction of multiple chains or multiple groups, then uh, this from running attack could happen. But we didn't think about it, and yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.